How's it going, everybody? Ryan here. We are back with another episode of Off the Record Fantasy Football, the fantasy football podcast that's going to help you dominate your league. And today, guys, we've got a bunch of anecdotes and a bunch of stories because we have seven simple tips to help you win your fantasy football league. So grab your pen, grab your paper, and let's talk Off the Record. So these tips are going to be simple, but if those of you that are, have been around for a while, like myself, I learned these seven tips from basically every experience I've had with fantasy football, whether that be my own, my league mates, or stories that my uh, friends and family have told me about their fantasy football league. So this is kind of a culmination of seven things that I'm still learning to do. I still screw up with this, and I don't think anybody's ever perfect with these. But if you keep these in mind, you guys are 100% guaranteed to be in a better position than if you don't uh, think about these tips. If, if you just kind of ignore them, well, they're here to help you win your league. So let's uh, let's jump into them so that you guys can win your league. The first tip is take your draft seriously. I've seen plenty of players troll and maybe play, maybe not play and, or maybe research, maybe not research. And then all of a sudden they have a lot of fun on draft night because they totally blew it up and they draft three kickers and four quarterbacks and six defenses and took one running back in the 12th round. Well, that's fun for that person for one night, maybe, but it's definitely not fun for your league mates for that night. And then guess what? If you don't take your draft seriously, you got four months of just being the worst team of just sucking. So take it seriously. And the fact that you guys should actually care about how the draft goes and what you want to get out of the draft. Also, if you're going to take it seriously, take it seriously. And even if you don't, you know, mock draft months before you're not on Twitter with the latest beat reporters tweet at, you know, 10 30 PM on a, on a Friday night, you know, you don't have to be that up to it, but just a day or two before your draft starts, do a mock draft, look at some rankings, kind of get a vibe of what players are sleepers, what players are not. Obviously, listening to this podcast is going to put you way ahead. But even if you you know, just want to listen to one episode or two episodes of any podcast and then check out just a day or two before kind of get your research under your belt. You guys don't have to be experts. You guys don't have to memorize every stat and where everybody finished last year. I've seen really good Instagram lists out there from things like fantasy pros and, and whatnot. So check out those lists, some, you know, wide receiver rankings, guys to target and what round, you know, those, those kind of rankings, take your draft seriously, do a little bit of research. It's going to go a long way. I promise you going into your first ever fantasy football draft. You may not know what to look for, Definitely fantasy pros is a great resource for you guys. They're probably like the culmination of everything. Like all the experts stuff is on there for the most part. And they've got some great rankings. They've got consensus rankings of experts across everywhere. Uh, I'm sure your, I know your platforms have rankings too. So check those out. Maybe see, maybe just trust those rankings at the draft. If it's your first time. Um, and even if you are a person that's going to be casual and, and have been playing for five years, I still do recommend do a mock draft or two, read some articles, just a couple hours before the draft, one, two days, maybe an hour's worth of, of research. And I promise you, it's going to go a long way into making your draft experience so much better. Second tip I have is don't give up too early. I've seen many examples of, of players who just, <laughs> they have a rough start or a rough first month and a half. So by week six, they're one five and they just check out. They don't set their lineup. They don't bother on the waiver wire. They just kind of trade everybody away and, oh, well, my season's over. Don't do that. Fantasy football is so luck based that you have no idea if all of a sudden your team's going to turn the corner or that random guy you picked up, that random running back is now all of a sudden going to be the starter because his his starter got injured. Right. So now he's the first guy on the depth chart. Never give up too early because you never know how things are going to play out. It may look grim. But you've always got a chance, except for maybe the last two weeks of the season and you're out by four games. Yeah, I understand. But still set your lineup. That's going to be that's going to come up later in this episode. But I've seen an example of somebody who was, you know, on the outside looking in. They weren't even the last place team at at the middle of November when we got about like four, five, six weeks to go. And they were like, you know what? It's too hard for me to get there. So I'm just going to sell off my team. And, you know, maybe I'll get a better draft pick for next season because I know my league does a lottery style. Why would you do that? Why would you just completely sell off your team when you have a chance? That's a that's not a very good attitude. 
You never know what could happen. It's fantasy football. We play to win. We don't play for, oh, maybe I'll win next season. We play to win every week, every Sunday. We want to win. We don't want to uh, be like, oh, yeah, let me just focus on next season. Come on. Like, don't give up too early. And on the flip side of that, there was somebody in my league just last season who had a terrible, terrible start. Their team, everybody on their team just kind of was asleep for the first month or so. And they swung a trade. They swung a trade, uh, I believe, for Joe Mixon midseason. They traded like some wide receivers for Joe Mixon. And all of a sudden, they took off. They were the hottest team in the second half of the season. Now, unfortunately, they missed out via tiebreakers, which is heartbreaking because it was a great, great effort and a great, great comeback to even be close to the playoffs. But unfortunately, with the tiebreakers, they didn't make it, but they didn't give up. And I bet you they had a better experience than the person that gave up around the same time and just sold everything off. You will have more fun. Your league will have more fun. And you'll just it'll just be a better experience. And you guys will be more seasoned even for next season to understand what you're going to do. Never give up too early. Fantasy is so much luck. You can do all the research and all the podcasting and all the all the number crunching. But at the end of the day, it just depends on how they do on the field. And nobody knows how they're going to do on the field any given week, which makes it so exciting and makes it a pure reason to not give up too early. Our third tip is to set your lineup every week. I know this may sound simple and obviously it's seven simple tips to win your fantasy league, but it is a very important step. I mean, you've got to set your lineup every week, especially if if you're new. It's only you only need to do it twice, twice a week, right? Tuesday morning, log in. Do you need to make any waiver wire ads? Do you have anybody on Thursday? No. Okay, cool. Log off and come back Saturday or Sunday. Set your lineup and be ready to go. That's all you have to do. It's not going to take that long. It's going to take a couple minutes. Set your lineup every week, no matter what. And it kind of ties back into our last point, right? Don't give up too early. Even if you're out of it, it would mean something to your league if you set your lineup. You could be the difference between somebody making and missing the playoffs. You do not just want to give away free wins to your league mates. You do not want to be that person that they just walk all over and just make fun of. And, oh, I've got I've got a bye week because I'm playing so and so. You don't want to be that person. Set your lineup every week. Try, even if it's not <laughs> good and your roster's decimated, still set your lineup because you never know. For example, last season, I was on a bye apocalypse. I had six or seven guys that were on a bye week. I totally could have thrown in the towel And I totally could have not bothered setting my lineup because I was playing the number one team in our league. They were unbeaten to that point. They had Cooper Cup, Jonathan Taylor, Mark Andrews, Patrick Mahomes, Mike Williams. I mean, they had the breakout of breakout teams. And I had a bunch of bench players, waiver wire ads, uh, and maybe one or two starters that weren't on a buy. It was looking grim. I could have mailed it in, not set my lineup. But I decided to actually give it a go because I wanted to beat the unbeaten team even without my starters. So I made some waiver wire ads. I made sure I had my lineup all set. And wouldn't you know it, I ended up winning and giving that team their only loss that season. The only loss they had in the regular season was to my backup and reserve squad. That is something I'll never forget. And that is definitely coming up in the trash talk in the league chat. My Bipocalypse team beat this juggernaut. It was great. It was awesome. The whole league was floored. The fact that I won and I, like I said, could have mailed it in and not set my lineup, but this is why it's important to set your lineup. And that's why guys, even if you're experienced, this tip is so important. Always set your lineup to the best of your ability every week, whether you're new or been playing for 20 years, setting your lineup with whatever you got. You never know what can happen because, again, this is going to be a second point that I've set it on. But fantasy is very luck related. So you can do all the research, but you never actually know week to week. Our fourth tip here is don't be a slave to the numbers and don't be a slave to the rankings. What I mean by that is don't bench somebody who's doing well and has performed well over the last couple weeks just because the guy on your bench is ranked higher on that fantasy pros or ESPN or Twitter poll or whatever that they say, oh, this guy's definitely ranked higher than him. If you've got wide receiver 14 and wide receiver 17, don't bench wide receiver 17 because wide receiver 14 is on your bench. Trust your gut. You're the one that put this team together. You're the one that's maybe winning, maybe not, but you're the manager. 
don't just let a computer, a anonymous source of numbers tell you who you should and shouldn't start. Now, obviously, the projections are there to give you guys a bit of information and to give everybody a bit of a, a guesstimate of what a team or what a player could be uh, able to achieve that week. Now, that's great, but you have to use all the information available to you. Think about the matchups. Think about re recent performance. Think about all that kind of stuff. Just because somebody's wide receiver uh, 17 and the other one's wide receiver 21 doesn't mean anything to you. Now, that's a little bit of information, but don't set your lineup like that just because they said so. Just because he's ranked four spots higher in the Fantasy Pros consensus rankings this week. Like, no, don't bother doing that. The who should I start uh, tool is great and all, but I really got to say, trust your gut. The who should I start tool really just uses these rankings. And usually the rankings are fine, but you're going to have some stinkers with those rankings. I've had experience with that. Don't just don't just trust it. If a guy's projected to get 1.1 points more, trust your gut. That's that's small enough for a margin of error. Like I said, nobody can pro project week to week what each player is going to score. If they could, they would be the fantasy god. But nobody is fantasy god. It's up to luck. It's up to numbers uh, that they do on the field. Don't be a slave to the numbers. <laughs> Don't do that. Trust your gut. Trust your instincts. If you get a good vibe one day about you, you know your uh, third running back over your second running back, trust it. If you got a bad vibe about this wide receiver in this matchup, Maybe find somebody else to put in there, but don't do it solely because it's wide receiver 14 and wide receiver 16, right? Those are too close. Even if it's wide receiver seven and wide receiver 17, if you have a good reason to believe that wide, rece wide receiver 17 will outperform wide receiver seven, trust yourself. And if it blows up in your face, so what? You made that call yourself. You didn't, you can't just pawn off the responsibility onto, oh, well, fantasy pros said this. I don't care what fantasy pros said. You're the one that sets the lineup. So make the decision with all the information you have. And I'm not saying don't trust the rankings. I'm saying don't be a slave to the rankings. You've got to make your own decisions, guys. That's how you win. And that's how you ascend to fantasy greatness. Do it with your gut, with trust your instincts. Obviously, take in all the information available, but don't do it just because, oh, he's wide receiver. 15 and he's wide receiver 18 so clearly i must play wide receiver 15 don't do it i've done it i had to snap myself of that habit and it's been so much better ever since when i just trust the guys that i've been seeing perform i've used my eyes not just numbers can't do everything with numbers and i love analytics but you can't trust the numbers all the time you got to trust your gut as well as the numbers so don't be a slave to only the numbers in the rankings trust your gut to be your own person, be your own person. We all said it based on fantasy pros rankings. Well, it wouldn't be very fun. Nobody would have a lot of fun then uh, unless you just had all the high ranking guys and they always perform well, which we know is not the case. So don't be a slave to the numbers. I'm going to keep repeating it. It's something I've had to break in my recent years because I'm like, oh, I don't know who to start. So I just trust whatever they say. And I'm like, well, I don't agree with it, but they say it. So I'm going to put them in and then I blame them. Really, it's on me. You got to trust yourself. You are the manager of your team. You are the coach of your team. Make the decision. Make the call. The fifth tip is be flexible. It's a very broad tip, but it's so applicable to fantasy football. Just you, you can't be rigid. You can't be locked into your ways with fantasy football. You can't say, oh, well, I, I, I'm going to never pick up a Jets running back because the Jets or the USC quarterbacks are always bad or things like that, right? These little biases that we have or we're stuck in our ways. We don't change. You got to be flexible. You always got to be willing to say, hey, I know this guy looks really good and I trust him and I want him to break out, but he's not. And there's this guy sitting here on my bench that is and he's performing and I'm seeing it. Trust him. Go with him right? Be flexible. Don't be set in your ways just because you want something to work. I know we all may want our phenomenal strategies and in our 200 IQ plays to pay off and to work out, but you got to be flexible. And this tip really applies a lot to our first tip with the draft, taking it seriously and be flexible. I've had a league member once get Rob Gronkowski sniped from them in the first round. Now, they, they, we're talking years ago, right? Rob Gronkowski, a first round pick. He's retired now, maybe. Um, and he got very mad. He got very tilted. And he was like, you know what? If, you know, I, Gronkowski was my guy. I have no backup plan. So my backup plan is I'm going to screw the rest of the league and I'm going to draft all the quarterbacks. 
he didn't realize that you can only have four quarterbacks on your roster. And when he got to the fifth round, he's like, it won't let me take a quarterback. And I was like, well, yeah, that's because you, there's a, there's a roster limit, right? So you got to be flexible. You can't just completely lose it, lose your cool, blow up because something bad happened. You got to adjust on the fly. A lot's going to happen. It's a long, long season. Uh, And it's just really, especially with the draft, you can't go in targeting one guy. And when that guy's not there, you have no backup plan. Always have a backup plan. Always read the room. Always feel it out and just decide, hey, I'm going to go with the best player available, regardless of who it is. I'm not going to go with my biases against a player. Now, yes, you may not like Ezekiel Elliott, but that, does, that that's OK. If he's the best running back available, maybe you look wide receiver at that spot and you get uh, running back value later. We'll go into more drafting tips because there's a lot that you can do to kill the draft, can crush the draft. And being flexible is such a huge, huge part of crushing your fantasy football draft. Our sixth tip is don't forget about trading. If you have no wide receivers, that means somebody else in your league has a bunch of wide receivers. And if you have a lot of running backs, that means somebody else in your league might not have a lot of running backs. You got to find that person to trade with. If you are struggling with a position, you need to find somebody who is struggling with a position that you have a surplus of. You have a surplus of running backs and a shortage of receivers, maybe trade that third running back. I know it's a third running back, and if we've got a great third running back that's actually an RB2, 100%. It, it, it's not going to feel good to trade that player away, but if you can get a wide receiver two for that RB2, and all of a sudden, you know, you've know you got your two running backs, and now you've got a really good receiver tandem instead of you know three running backs, and you can only play two, and then you have an eh, a meh, uh, one wide receiver, and then a good one, another wide receiver, You got to find that trade to balance out your roster, right? That guy's doing you no good on your bench. Don't forget about trades. I've heard for years, people are like, oh, well, I don't have any running backs. And they've got a wide receiver, too, on their bench because they're just loaded with wide receivers. Move that guy. You're not using him. You need a running back. It's like, well, I don't want to see him succeed on that team. Well, they don't want to see their running back succeed on your team. But you got to do something that's mutually beneficial. Everybody wants to win. So if you can give something that helps somebody else win, they're probably going to take that and they probably won't mind giving you something that you that's going to help you win because they're like, well, my team's better anyway. And this is the missing piece. You're going to say the same thing and you guys are going to trade and we're going to see who wins the trade. Now, obviously, it's going to be fun to see who won and who lost the trade and whatnot, but you got to make the trade. Do not forget about it because there's not going to be a ton of running backs on the waiver wire. There's not going to be a ton of top talent on the waiver wire, period. Maybe one guy or two guys a season pops off and it's week two and nobody's picked him up. He's been on nobody's radar. And now all of a sudden he's the lead running back for X team. Yeah, everybody's going to want that guy, but that guy only comes around once a season. What you need to do is to trade with somebody. You've got the surplus. They've got a deficit. You've got a deficit. They've got a surplus. Go for it. You have two running backs and four receivers. Well, wouldn't you like to have three running backs and three receivers to play every week? If that's how your league is structured. Go for it. Like make that trade with the person that has three running backs and two receivers or or, or four running backs and two receivers, you know, something like that. If they have extras, go get it. And you might have to give up something good. Everybody's going to want to feel like they fleeced each other. That's the kind of trade you need to make. We're going to dive into trades in another episode here. But for now, just remember trades exist. If there's nobody on the waiver wire, there's nobody on your bench that you can trust. Go to the trade market. Talk with your league mates. Keep that. Uh, group message, keep the league chat, keep keep the uh, Facebook messaging group, whatever you guys use, Twitter, keep it rolling, keep it active. And the more people talk about their rosters, the more people are going to be willing to say, hey, actually, you've got two tight ends. I don't really have a tight end I trust, but I have an extra wide receiver and you're low on receivers. So why don't we flop my uh, third receiver for your second tight end and boom, all of a sudden both teams are better off because of it, potentially. Now, it's not a guarantee, right? But Your roster construction will just be better. Don't forget about the trades. There are players out there. You just have to negotiate for them. You can't just pick them up for free. And our seventh and final tip of the episode, trust the guys that got you there. This is one I learned the hardest way last season. At the end of last season, Antonio Brown, I believe was a free agent or was on my bench. Either way, 
I picked up Amon Ross St. Brown and I, he was just, he went off. He carried me during some bad weeks and I made it to the fantasy championship and I played against that super team. And I was like, I can beat him this time again, right? I put you the one loss on him last time. I can do it again now with my starters. And I got home Sunday morning, right before kickoff. And I looked at the rankings and Antonio Brown was rated higher and he was a free agent because somebody dropped him. I don't know why. And I remember I picked him up and I deliberated for about 45 minutes until about 15 minutes before kickoff. I decided to bench a Monra St. Brown who was insane and featured on a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of championship rosters this past season. And I benched him for Antonio Brown. That was a terrible decision because I went against one of the guys that got me in this position. I basically sold my soul for Antonio Brown and Antonio Brown took his clothes off and ran off the field in the middle of the game. Amon Ross St. Brown went on to put 20 plus points on the Seahawks. If I play Amon Ross St. Brown, I'm sitting here talking to you as a champion. Instead, I'm sitting here handing back-to-back champions to another person in my league and sitting here as runner-up. You got to trust the guys that got you there. You got to go with the horses that got you to the finals. If you're in the finals, if you're in the playoffs, don't change what's not broken. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. You got there. Your team got you there. Amon Ross St. Brown got me there. And what did I do? I turned my back on Amon Ross St. Brown and said, Antonio Brown against the Jets. It's the flashy name. It's the popular one. He's ranked higher. He's ranked about eight, 10 spots higher, somewhere in that range. I got to trust him, right? The projections are uh, on a side, but Amon Ra hasn't stopped putting up 20 points for a month. Is he still going to do it? I, uh, I, no, no way. I, I, I'm going to call the perfect shot. I'm going to bench him. And I lost the league. You got to trust the guys that got you there. He got me there. You got to trust him. Start your studs. A very common expression in the fantasy world. Start your studs. The guys that got you there, the guys you picked early in the in the draft or the guys that are putting up points consistently for you, trust them. Don't chase the flashy play. Don't chase the flashy name. Trust the guys that got you there. I'm sure I'm going to be adding to this list of tips as I learn more and play more. And you guys should be thinking about this stuff, too. I come out of every fantasy football season with another thing that I maybe I could have done better or maybe I'll look at this next season. I, I know one year I was like, oh, well, I completely faded quarterbacks and it didn't work. So now let me target quarterbacks a bit earlier in the draft and it paid off. I believe I won the championship that year. So you got to always be flexible, which is tip number five. And and just tr- just uh, just come out of every fantasy football season with something else to learn. Grow as a fantasy football player. I know it's a bit deep, but you got to grow, right? You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. And if you're not winning the league, you got to change it up. Change your team name. Change up the juju. Change up something. But you definitely have to learn from your experiences. And these are seven tips that I have learned from my experiences. Really quickly, let's go back through them. Number one, take your draft seriously. You can't win your league at the draft, but you can certainly lose it. Don't lose your draft or don't lose your league at the draft. That's why it's tip number one. Tip number two is don't give up too early because you never know what might happen. You may go on an insane run and end up getting into the playoffs. And then once you're there, anything can happen. Tip three, set your lineup every week. It's really simple. I know it's basic and some of you might face palm when I say it, but it's so important no matter what the situation is, whether you're in first, in last or something in between, set your lineup every week. Tip number four, don't be a slave to the numbers. Trust your gut. It kind of ties in with number seven. But don't just put a guy in because he was ranked higher or he's projected more. Actually think about what you're doing and who you're putting in. And they're not always right. The numbers are not always right. Tip number five, be flexible. Always be ready to adapt and adjust no matter what happens, especially at the draft. Tip six, don't forget about trades. The waiver wire is almost always barren of running backs. So maybe you might have to go out and make a trade for one or a quarterback or something. But there are trades. There are players in the league that you have access to. You're just going to have to give up something. And number seven, trust the guys that got you there. They You got there for a reason. So trust those guys. But guys, I really want to say thank you for listening to this episode. I hope these tips help you. If you guys do want to reach out to me, I forgot to say this in the first episode, but if you want to talk to me, reach out to me, DM me with questions or comments, 
You can find me on Twitter at RyeBreadSN, R-Y-E-B-R-E-A-D-S-N. I am open to DMs and I'm open to just chatting with you guys. I hope to hear from some of you with some questions or maybe some feedback. And guys, thank you so much for listening. Make sure to subscribe if you are enjoying this podcast and I will see you guys in the next one.